what they say is the start of everything. It really wasn't the start. It at least started when they shot me. It was a Thursday night. It was September the 5th in 2002. I locked up the restaurant, set the alarm. We all walked to our cars. I got in uh, the driver's side, shut the door, and before I could do anything, the window to my left exploded. Central, just emergency 911. There's been a shooting at Fort Wayne Restaurant. Central, you, you the one who got shot? No, ma'am. It was the owner. I think he got shot and robbed. I heard the gunshot. Hey, like, was it a robbery and a shooting? Yes, ma'am. I hope he's not dead. Got the ambulance and the police officer on the way. Who did this? I, I have no idea. I just saw the guy's back. Then they killed the five people in one day, and that's when the whole panic started. I think it's fair to say all hell broke loose. It was actually really insane. My mother wouldn't even leave the house. Everybody was cautious. I mean, you could be at Costco pumping gas and it's your last day on Earth. I'm Tony Harris. In the fall of 2002, I was a local news anchor in my hometown of Baltimore, Maryland. On October 3rd, reports flooded in about a series of random shootings in the D.C. area. People looked to journalists like me for answers, but we didn't have them. And that terrible day was only the beginning. The attacks grew into one of the most disturbing crime sprees in the history of our country. She found out about this tarot card and this message to police. They were going to continue to kill people until they were stopped. He talked about extorting money from the U.S. government to go create a utopian society where he could bring his children and other young lost souls. I do believe he was brainwashed, for lack of a better term. He listened to tapes when he was falling asleep, giving him subliminal suggestions that there was essentially a war going on between blacks and whites. As far as I'm concerned, he was a psychopathic, cold-blooded killer that can never walk the street again. But now, 18 years later, the Supreme Court will rule on the sniper's case, and the convicted killer could one day walk free. So I began reinvestigating this case, and what I discovered shocked me. On this season of Monster, what really happened? And should the killer ever be given a second chance? From the producers of Atlanta Monster and Monster, the Zodiac Killer, iHeartRadio and Tenderfoot TV present Monster, DC Sniper. 